Well, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you seem to be. Welcome to Mount Zion Church Online. I'm uh, the senior pastor, Pastor Eric Hansen. It's wonderful to have you with us tonight during Holy Week. Getting excited about Easter weekend. I hope you will join us. We got lots of things happening this week. Tonight, we're just going to take a little bit of time in preparing for Easter. And then uh, this Friday at 6 p.m., we'll be broadcasting a Good Friday uh, devotional that we'll be doing. And then I'm really excited about this at 6.30 Sunday morning. I hope you will join me live. I'll be broadcasting from the top of Mount Zion Road at the lookout up there. And uh, we'll be watching the sunrise together. So I hope you'll join me there at 6.30. Not up there, but online here. And uh, I'm hoping the weather's going to be great. But either way, we'll be on Facebook Live for that. We won't be on our website. So make sure you go to our Facebook page at Mount Zion Church. Also then 1015, we have How Sweet the Sound. It is a special illustrated message with all of us pastors here at Mount Zion Church. And uh, we are excited about that. It's an illustrated sermon with object lessons and video. And uh, it's just going to be a great time. And I want to remind you that on Sunday morning, before our illustrated sermon, we are going to be having communion. So I encourage you this week to at some point dig around your house, find some juice, find some crackers, some bread. Don't make a big deal out of it. It's an object lesson that Jesus gave to his disciples. And we are going to join together and have communion on Sunday Easter morning. So I encourage you, 1015, join us on Facebook or our website at mtzchurch.org. And we'd love to see you. Also, I want to thank everybody for your faithful giving. Mount Zion Church, you are awesome. Keep it up. But uh, we really need to make sure that if you would like to give to this ministry or if you are a member at this church, we encourage you to get your tithes and offerings in simply by clicking Give Online at our website or you can mail it in at P.O. Box 425 Pine Grove, California, 95665. Or bring it by the church or knock on my door. Okay, we hope you will do that. And uh, let me open us up with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much that you are protecting so many here in Amador County. We ask you to continue to do so. Father, we lift up all those that are living right now in isolation. They're lonely, they're hurting, they're scared. And we pray the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding to cover them. Father, I pray for our health workers and our first responders. I pray, God, that you will protect them and guide them. Father, I pray for our leaders of our country and our state and our county that you would just guide them and that they would listen. And Father, I lift up those families that are struggling right now with unemployment or fears of that. And God, that you would just take this economy and hold it in your hands and that people would not be left without jobs. Provide for them now, even now as we speak. If that's somebody out there tonight, I just pray God's peace that he will provide for you. And lastly, God, not, not of course, not least, God, I pray for those that are suffering from this virus, that, God, you would just heal their bodies in the name of Jesus, that you would just simply touch them and they would walk away healed. I pray for the medications and vaccines to come out quickly and that they would have no side effects and they would just eradicate this coronavirus. Father, I specifically lift up Nicole Cunningham, uh, excuse me, Dominguez. I knew her as Nicole and uh, Lot Dominguez, her husband Lot in the hospital right now. We pray, God, your healing touch upon his body. We pray that all the medications and everything that they're doing would work perfectly and that, God, he would rise and walk out of there and be with his family. We lift up Nicole and we pray for peace upon her, God, and we pray for health for her body as well. So, God, touch the entire home and bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, like I said, I am excited. Uh, It has just been so frustrating not seeing people, but at least uh, I've been able to make some calls and talk to many of you, and I'm so grateful that you are doing well. I just felt like it was important to kind of gear up for Easter. It's so hard when we're not going to have any kind of Easter function, really. We're not having an Easter egg hunt, and we're not having uh, a Good Friday communion service. I mean, all of that stuff will be online, but it's just not the same and being together. And so I thought we've got to get in this mindset. We've got to, you know, maybe turn off the news for five minutes and just kind of get into a mindset of preparing our hearts for Easter. 
Well, in my morning devotions this morning, I, I was looking in uh, John chapter 12. So if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, the Mount Zion Church home version, I pray that you have your Bibles ready and that you would open it up to John chapter 12. I'm just going to read 10 quick verses. And it's about Mary of Bethany. It's a great story and great events that happened. When I think of Mary, I can't help but think of these three snapshots. Each one, she's at the feet of her beloved Jesus. First, she was learning, she was weeping, and she was worshiping. Yet this woman, who, yes, was the sister of Martha's dismay, she sat at the feet of Jesus instead of manning the kitchen. Yes, this is the one who sobbed at the feet of Jesus, who seemed to have come too late when her, her beloved Lazarus was um, lay dead for four days behind a stone. And yes, this is the same Mary who was unabashedly worshipped at the feet of Jesus. She anointed him with precious perfume and just six days before Passover and the unleashing of all the events that would lead Jesus to the cross. This Mary really spoke to me and, and I learned a lot from her today and I hope it encouraged you as well. So beginning in, John uh, uh, beginning in John chapter 12, verse 1, let me read. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom had raised, he had raised from the dead. There he had made him a supper, and Mar Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Verse 3. Then Mary took a pound of a very costly oil of spikenard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrances of this oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, yeah, that Judas, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? I love how the Bible makes it clear of his motives. We don't have to guess here. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. So verse 7 says, But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. Verse 8, For the poor you will have with you always but me you do not have always. And then verse 9, it's about the plot to kill Lazarus as well. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also. They were just trying to eliminate any evidence at all. So Mary... What can you teach us about the way a heart readies itself for the climax of salvation in history? That was what I was receiving out of this, and I hope you will too. So number one, recall and celebrate what the Lord has done for you. Start remembering what God has done for you. We know that this dinner was being thrown in Jesus' honor. Most likely it was a way to thank him for bringing Lazarus back from the dead. Okay, so if the woman in Matthew and Mark represent the synoptic gospels, then we also know the party was hosted in the home of Simon, the leper. Now, he was the man who many regarded had been brought back to the land of the living, frankly. So Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Simon, they remembered what Christ had done, and they were celebrating it. So I encourage you, as you prepare your heart this week, that you think back. I'm just what God has done for you. Begin to just thank him. Celebrate the new life that you've seen that God has brought into your lives. Number two, take, remember and take heart to what God has taught you. We know that Mary spent a considerable, a, a ton of time at, Mary, at, at Jesus' feet. It's kind of like when we go to church and go to church and go to church. Sometimes it's easy. You've gone so many years. Maybe you were raised in the church. You can just start tuning stuff out. You've heard it all before. You know, I was joking with Pastor Jimmy. I was saying, it's not like Good Friday. I'm going to give this, the, this devotion about how Jesus was, uh, died on the cross. And then come back Sunday to see what happens. I think everybody knows the Easter story, even those who don't believe it. 
know the Easter story. And it's so easy for us to just take it for granted. Yeah, 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 we know that, we know that, we know that. But what I want to encourage you to do is look at what Mary did. She was at his feet, she took heart, she thought about it, remembered it. And the fact that she brought burial perfume is, is very specific of either God supernaturally moving in her heart and, and told her to bring this particular gift without her understanding, or it's a testimony that she had been listening to him. And I think that was more of what it was. Mary had these pieces put together, and he, she, kinda, she had to kind of plan for this thing and put this costly burial perfume together. Maybe she had been thinking about it and took it to heart. As you prepare your heart this Easter, what has God been teaching you so far this year? Through this whole coronavirus thing, what has God taught us? I mean, other than stock up on toilet paper. I mean, honestly, what has he taught us? I know that he's, he's taught us not to take for granted those people that we see on an everyday basis. How about our nurses and doctors, grocery store workers, police officers, and fire department? The, the senior home care people, hospice, don't take it for granted. These people, even right now, are laying their lives down on the line. It's amazing to me. We can't take it for granted. One of the things I know that I've learned is how much I miss my church family when we're not all together. I am the worst. Those of you who know me, I am the worst at meet and greet. We do this meet and, oh, we should do, we should do, you could do a meet and greet right now. Just right now, while you're listening to me tell this a little bit, you could text somebody and give them a hug. Come on, just text a hug. Go ahead. H-U-G. Exclamation point. A little smiley face and a heart. Okay? There you go. Okay? And what I do on the platform, I laugh all the time because nobody ever pays attention to the countdown that we do for five minutes. They never do. In fact, it's kind of a running gag that they look at the clock go to zero and they just, Keep on going. And I'm like, ah, this is killing me. And I think I take, took it for granted. Because now I would give anything for a meet and greet right now. <laughs> so Mary didn't do that. After all, she knew Jesus. Mary knew Jesus personally. And if you look at John chapter 11, verse 25, she was listening to Jesus tell Martha that he is the resurrection and the life. And it would have at least, she must have considered that fact. She must have considered that fact that that was going on. And what I think she did is she realized that this story, that what Jesus was preparing for, is what number three, and my point is, is don't skip to the happy ending. Don't just skip to it. There's a prelude leading up to this happy ending. And she must have considered, oh yeah, I heard him say he's the resurrection and the life. And would have at least considered that fact that he might... Yeah, he conquered death with Lazarus. He's going to conquer death with himself. Mary understood more than the most imp that the most important thing was being with someone in the moment. Being with Jesus in that moment. She had wept with Jesus when just a few moments before Lazarus was dead. And he would raise Lazarus to life and all of a sudden, she must have just remembered, wait a minute, he did that. Likewise, Mary honored the suffering of our Lord Jesus and the solemn pain of what was going to come. She must have known that by just weeping and pouring oil onto his feet. I encourage you, as you prepare for Easter, that these days that are leading up to it, you would begin to meditate and think on the depth of Christ's sacrifice for you and the pain that he went through because of our sin. Let his agony and, and his desperate state kind of sink in. And think about it. Where would you be without Jesus? And then celebrate Easter morning. And number four, don't for, you, 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 sometimes you've just got to get rid of the noise. You've got to forget about everyone around you. Although that evening was marked by this festive atmosphere, they were celebrating that Lazarus was raised from the dead, that the leper had been healed, and Mary, she was there to honor Jesus in his presence. Mary didn't try to please others and keep the mood light. In fact, she ignored what everyone else was doing around her, and she broke open this costly bottle of perfume and began to pour it on the feet of Jesus. She even humbled herself, 
by wiping his feet with her hair. And in those days, women would never have their hair down in public. She refused to care about the opinion of others and instead cared about the one thing that was needed, worshiping Jesus. So as you prepare for Easter, don't let the fact that others take the day as simply a day when the kids get some Easter baskets and and candy and, and peeps and all that good stuff, don't let that deter don't let that deter you that we're not having these big events and these big service with everybody packed in here. No, don't let that deter you from approaching Jesus with an unashamed worship. Number 5, give him that which is most precious to you. The perfume that Mary anointed Jesus with was no trivial gesture. Gesture. This wasn't a small thing that she did. As Judas incredulously uh, points out, this precious mixture would have been worth a year's salary. And Mary just poured it out onto his feet as an act of love. Why? Because she knew the lavish love that she was giving, she was going to receive from Christ was much greater. Jesus will always return much more than we give. As you prepare for Easter... Ask God to show you, is there an area in my life that I've put off limits? Is that too precious for me to give to God? Can I not surrender that? What is it that is going on? Think about what's most most precious to you. What are you willing to lay at the feet of Jesus? She was willing to break open a year's worth of salary and just pour it out on his feet. What are you willing? What is precious to you? And lastly, number six, bless Jesus by your unashamed worship. For me, one of the most mind-numbing aspects of this whole story of Mary anointing Jesus is the fact that somehow in God's infinite wisdom, in God's infinite kindness, he allowed this humble woman like Mary to actually minister to him in this hour of need to bless him. It's hard for me to wrap my head around, frankly. Jesus was blessed by an act of faith from Mary. And because of it, he promised that wherever the gospel would be preached, her story would be told. So as you prepare for Easter, humbly ask God to allow your worship to be pure, pleasing, and be a blessing to him. Bless the Lord who has so mightily blessed you. Don't take this Easter for granted. Whoever's the head of your home, whether you're a single mom, single dad, or married couple, or whether you're just single, you know what? Wake up early Easter morning rejoicing, being thankful. Recall the things that he's done. Think of what is most precious to you. Build up to it. Think about it all week. I encourage you to do that. And I believe we will have one of the most special Easter's we've ever had up here in Amador County. I really do. Imagine celebrating Easter in your home with your family, with your kids, and focusing on Jesus. It's kind of exciting. I hope you'll participate with us. I hope that you will get your communion elements together. I hope you'll join us on Good Friday at 6 p.m. I hope you will join us up at 6.30 in the morning on Sunday. Don't worry. I know what a lot of you are going to do. You're going to sleep in, and then you're going to look for the recording, okay? But come on, join me live. It'll be much more fun. And then at 10.15 Sunday, join us for our special illustrated sermon. So let me close this in a word of prayer. Father, I pray that everyone watching here today would start preparing their hearts for Easter, that we would not take it for granted, that we would examine our hearts, and that, God, we would be as excited for this Easter as if it was our very first one. God, I pray for parents to lead their children in celebrating Easter, not just with a basket, but with you, Christ, and celebrating the resurrection. God, I pray for this whole county to be raised up in a sense spiritually dead, would have a spiritually awakening, awakening as Christ was raised as well. 
So God, we just, I pray for other churches in Namador County. I pray, God, that you bless them. I pray you bless their congregations. Father, I pray that you use the internet to lead people to you. So God, we just thank you. We thank you for the story of Mary and the example that she set for us. Now, God, bless each and every one in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you on Friday at 6 p.m. for Good Friday. I hope you have a great rest of the week. God bless you.